Okay, so we're having a conversation on raised barrel hinges and the client's concern is whether or not the hinge that they have can be duplicated and the hinge that we're looking at is here this is a this is a hinge on a door for a client who when you study the hinge you can see that the hinge leaf in this area appears to be lifted or raised off of the jam and if it wasn't that raised barrel hinge that ra that barrel would probably bury itself into the jam the client has also supplied an additional photo here gives you a little bit of a tip off because of this funny swag on the hinge leaf but then this image certainly tells us that it's a raised barrel hinge because we can see this so a raised barrel hinge is used when you have a door frame like this and you have a door like this okay and if you used a standard hinge well the barrel of that standard hinge would have to be here well that's not going to work because it's going to hit the jam and I've literally seen installations where they have mortised out this area of the frame to make it work well that's not proper what you could do is use a raised barrel hinge where it moves the it moves the barrel of the hinge off away from where it would normally be then that hinge is bent in this funny fashion permitting it to work in our application okay now you could have why would you need a raised barrel hinge well you have a deep inset the dimension from the face of the frame down to the face of the door is much larger than standard or you had a standard frame that would have taken a standard hinge but then someone added jam extensions and jam extensions is a piece of wood added to the face of the frame uh, because your wall is six inch and they ordered four and nine sixteenths jams and now what are you gonna do order new frames and doors or add trim wood or what's called a jam extension but then and that will solve the problem of making the frame flush to the wall but it creates this problem so inherently what a raised barrel hinge does for us is defined elegantly by bomber raised barrel both hinge leaves are offset to raise the barrel off the jam allowing the door to swing without the knuckles rubbing on the jam used when a door is set deeply into a frame prohibiting the use of a standard full mortise hinge okay that's that's where that is used now the client also provided us some additional photos Here is, here is one. Same kind of look. Got a raised barrel hinge. Now the key here is what we're dealing with is a standard hinge has its leaves like this. A raised barrel hinge, again, has this, you know, large bend to it. The whole point is that the vertical axis of pivoting, it would normally be here on a frame, but now it's here. It's been shifted over, is the point. That vertical axis of pivoting has been moved over to get it off the jam. Okay, so the hinge that we're proposing is the bomber. The hinge we're proposing is indeed a bomber 50, a, a BB 5040. That would be a full mortise hinge, ball bearing, raised barrel. Now, here's really the, the image that shows very elegantly how that's moved over. Okay. And trying to really show that. And if you study this hinge angle to yours, you'll see that it emulates your, your hinge. And this is, I saw this at a, um, 
this was in a retail setting. They were selling, I'm not sure what was being sold here, I don't recall, some sort of access control. But they had a deep inset frame, and the way and the way they solved the problem was prepping that frame rather than get raised barrel hinges. Uh, that would not be advisable in an exterior application. I imagine they were selling access control hardware for an exterior application. I sure wouldn't want, want the big hole cut in my frame. Okay, uh, so very interesting. So now, can the bomber hinge be made to work? Well, we're going to notice a couple of things. Uh, on the client's images. First of all, radius corner. That's a 5 8 radius. Okay, so Bomber can make a radius corner hinge on one leaf. That shouldn't be a problem. Square corner over here, fine. A raised barrel scenario, that's fine as well. That's not going to be a problem. You'll notice that they have these projecting prongs back here. Um, I would sure not, um, that is not a security measure at all. That's just, that permits the manufacturer when they're assembling the hinge onto the edge of the door to position it correctly so that this dimension is, uh, is determined by flushing the hinge against the face of the door. When that door is in the closed position, if I drove that pin out, and this might be a riveted pin down here, that might be supposed to be a riveted pin so that you can't drive it out. And an RP or a riveted pin would be expected at least on an exterior door. But if I were to drive that pin out, I could then just tip the door out. These prongs wouldn't do anything. So radius corners, Bomber can make that. The, the only issue the client's going to have are, are, are twofold. Uh, there will be two issues. Number one, this zigzag pattern or non-template pattern. That's not going to be available. Okay, So the standard template pattern on a, on a bomber hinge in a four, assuming that that hinge is four inch, I'm quite sure that it is. That's where the holes are going to be. Okay, they are not zigzag. So the client will have to. I would suggest that these holes for these screws are drilled quarter inch, and that you insert. Glue and, in, glue and insert dowel rods into those holes to flush those out. You'll then drill new holes. That's number one. But first, the leaf thickness of this hinge is very likely about 90 thousandths of an inch. So, um, a hinge that the client might have is going to be a leaf thickness looking at a comparable uh, residential hinge. Here you go. And a four inch, you know, you're looking at a hinge thickness of 0 .085. So that's a very thin hinge. In the four by the four inch hinge that we would be able to sell is going to be a hundred and thirty thousandths. So the hinge is going to be substantially thicker. So that would have to get mitigated in order for any of this to work. So you need to not only redrill these holes, but you'll have to mortise this all deeper on the door side and on the frame side. But at the end of the day, that's carpentry work. There's nothing special or unusual about doing this work. You see that you've got the room to get the thicker hinge down here, or at least I suspect that you do. But without mortising the leaf th deeper, on both the door, you know, and, and frankly, you could get away with doing it double mortise depth on one side, but that would not be considered best practice at all. But it is done at times when you are surface mounting a hinge on a leaf. A double mortise would be a scenario where you have a channel iron frame. It's literally a piece of C-shaped steel. You're going to surface mount you're going to surface mount your hinge leaf, okay? But then your door leaf 
and your inside frame dimension would not permit you to surface mount this leaf because the door is too wide. They will literally take the prep in the edge of the door. Here's the edge of the door, and they will they will um, rather than it being for the thickness of the leaf, they'll mortise it double deep to allow the door this area to come flush to the C jam to the C structure the C. Uh, structural steel so that's a double mortise on one side you could consider doing that if you have room to save you from having to prep it on both sides but you will have to mortise it deeper one way or another and then of course contend with the holes this is a wood edge this is a metal clad door with a wood edge and a wood frame so you've you you know the the possibility is most certainly there to permit you to do this sort of work um, I don't know why the hinge is being replaced um, so uh, I'm not sure what makes the client, and this is <laughs> unrelated, I'm not sure what makes the client require to be changing the hinge. Um, maybe some were lost, but the, all, the initial question was, can you find me some of these hinges? No, I, I can't. I, I wouldn't know where to begin to locate a residential raised barrel hinge. Um, and this one by Bomber would be the one we can do. If any of that is of any help, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. My name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builders. Thank you.